There is great debate, although the statistics prove quite incontrovertibly that beer is one of the healthiest beverages you can drink. Essentially, beer is liquid bread and uh, it provides many of the same nutrients that bread provides, except in liquid form. That's one of the reasons why the monks of old brewed their own beer inside their monasteries, because they were not allowed to eat during certain periods called fasting, but they were allowed to drink beer that they had made. And the beer provided all those nutrients that bread would have provided. Today, they'll tell you women who are pregnant shouldn't drink any alcohol. I think that's ridiculous. I think a beer a day is one of the healthiest things that a person can do to keep themselves in peak health. And studies have shown that um, a regular, moderate consumption of beer will help prevent Alzheimer's disease. Beer, therefore, is one of the healthiest things you can ingest. Beer is made by combining essentially four ingredients, malt, hops, water, and yeast. In old days, the yeast was wild and they didn't know how the beer became what it became because of the wild yeasts. Today, of course, people input yeasts into their beer to uh, uh, act upon the fermentable sugars that, that are inside the malt. But there are really only four solid ingredients to beer. And those four ingredients are listed in the German purity law called the Reinheitsgebot, which said only those four substances can go into beer in order for it to be considered a beer. There are four senses you must use in order to appreciate beer. The first one, of course, is your sense of sight. Pour the beer into a proper glass hold it up and look at it, usually with a white background, not directly into sunlight, to appreciate the color of what that beer is supposed to be. Is it light? Is it golden in color? Is it amber in color? Is it red in color? Is it ruby or deep dark red or even black? That's the first aspect of appreciating beer and that's the sight of it. The different malts that you use give you colors. Um, like uh, there's chocolate malts and black malts and uh, roasted barleys and uh, there's toasted types of malt. Some make the beer orange, some make them brown, some make them black, some make them red. So it all depends on what types of malts that you're using. The second way you appreciate beer is through your sense of smell. And as with everything else in the human body, Smell dictates what type of taste we're going to have. When you smell a beer, you are actually trying to appreciate what we call its nose. Could it be floral in nature? Could it be crisp or bitter in nature in terms of its smell? Is it acidic in nature? And the way to appreciate the smell of the beer is to put your nose deeply into the glass and inhale and to try to appreciate all the flavors and the scents that are coming through your olfactory lobes. Beer, the yeast, the hops, the malt, everything. It all affects the aroma of the beer. Yeast is, I would say, responsible for about 60 to 80% of the flavor in your beer. You could make 10 batches of the exact same beer, and if you put 10 different yeasts into it, they're all gonna taste completely different. The third sense that you must appreciate when you taste beer is your sense of touch. When the beer enters your mouth, how does it feel in your mouth? Light and fizzy and carbonated, heavy, thick, viscous, or somewhere in between? Mouth feel is how you perceive a beer when you put it in your mouth. Some of them might feel thin and watery, other, other, others are thick and chewy you know, the heavier, stronger beers because they have a lot more malt. Medium body beers, obviously, it's kind of somewhere between the thin and watery beers and the big chewy beers, but that's how you perceive mouthfeel of a beer. The fourth sense that you use is actually the taste of the beer. And once again, in order to use the taste of the beer, you must also use your nose. You must use olfaction and something called retro olfaction. That means bring the beer into your mouth, let it sit there for a while, 
let it roll over your palate. Do you taste sweet? Do you taste hops? Do you taste malt? And then exhale through your nose to see if you can pick up any other particular tastes that are in the beer. There's, every style has their own particular tastes. So you might want fruity, you might want malty, you might want hoppy. You, you know, there's all, it all depends on what particular style of beer you're drinking. As a beer taster um, and a beer reviewer, I frequently get sent beers in the mail to try and evaluate and sample and evaluate, you know, and review. So I can tell uh, my readers and others just which beers are worth going after and looking for and which ones aren't. My beer cabinet was starting to get full with a lot of different beers from around the country. So in, rather than drink them all myself, I decided to have what was called my first Pub Scout beer tasting. And that beer tasting uh, involved me inviting some close friends, some intimate associates. Um, uh, my wife and I set out a bunch of different beers and palate cleansers in order to evaluate the beers properly between each course. And in the space of four hours, we tested and evaluated 24 beers, ranging from light, fizzy saisons all the way down to thick, viscous, and um, heavy stouts like 10 Fitty. Well, being a college student, you run into a very limited variety of beers and really not any kind of beers that uh, are particularly great in their taste. Really, they get you drunk, and that's the only reason they're around. Uh, you know, you run into a lot of Keystone Light, Natural Ice, Coors Light, these kinds of things. Really kind of run-of-the-mill swill. Not very good, but it's cold and it has alcohol in it. I've learned that there's really not one beer that you should always be drinking. There are different beers for different occasions. And they blend excellently with different kinds of foods. There's really no universal beer. And uh, that's definitely something I learned at the taste. And combinations are endless. And that's one of the great things about beer. If there's one thing I'd like for people my age to learn is that there's a whole new world open to them that they can explore. And that al drinking alcohol doesn't mean you need to get drunk. You know, at the tasting, I sat with a group of men, we had a few beers, no one was drunk. But if you looked around, it was just a bunch of guys having a good time, feeling a little more relaxed and enjoying a great beer. Sight. Touch. Taste. And smell. But I said you use five senses to taste your beer. And the fifth sense is your sense of hearing. You can call that pouring the beer into the glass, or you can call it when people toast each other and clink their glasses together. That incorporates all the five senses that you use when you taste beer.